survivors and welcome to Survivor's Guild, the only channel that determines your odds of surviving 2017's insane follow-up to an already insane movie that's double the amount of insane for those of you keeping track. Another wolf cop. So stay tuned till the end for your survival stats. I'm your sharp-dressed slasher turned furry fuzz ghost fake. Now I hope you like suspicious beer that gives you a terrible case of the bubble guts, because this movie is getting spoiled. Another wolf cop, written and directed by Lowell Dean, and starring Leo Fafard, Amy Matizio, Jonathan Cherry, Yannick Basson, and Serena Miller. Another Wolf Cop is about a part-time cop, part-time wolf cop, full-time alcoholic, who must fight against the forces of evil as they open up a brewery in an attempt to save the town of Woodhaven. We open up to this guy spitting facts. You're a loser. It's just a fact. Jeez, dude. I might be a loser, but at least my name isn't Sydney Swallows. Sydney Swallows pitches his beer to us because drinking it will make us cooler, or at the very least, more fun. But when the sound guy bumps him with his boom mic, the commercial that they are shooting comes to an abrupt end. Sydney walks over to his henchwoman, number two, and tells her that their entire existence hinges on the next 48 hours, whatever that means, before telling her to kill the sound guy. One more thing. Let's kill the f***ing sound. Hmm? And while he ganders at the new prototype, number two fires the sound guy, sending him into the meat bank at deposit number 25. Cut over to a high speed chase between the wolf cop wagon and the Santa's helper's gift delivery service. The helpers begin shooting at the wagon before breaking out the heavy artillery and wasting the wolf cop wagon. But the helpers celebrate too early when they hear something on top of their truck. One of the dudes looks out the back of the truck for a sign of the crypto vigilante, but gets pulled out of the truck and into the meat bank when his headless corpse is jammed through the roof of the box truck at deposit number 26. Wolf Cop then drops into the truck and annihilates Santa's helpers. This dude gets his eyes plucked out before his head gets plucked off at deposit number 27. Wolf Cop then turns his attention to this guy. Looks like I'd rather make the wolf fight before he tears him to pieces, depositing him bit by bit at deposit number 28. Meanwhile, Tina, who's been promoted to chief, is trying to teach rookie Scott a thing or two while denying the existence of a wolf cop. When Scott's coffee gets shot out of his hands by a stray bullet from the driver of the delivery truck. <laughs> and they take chase. Just then, Wolf Cop punches through the driver and then punches him in the face, and then punches his ticket into the meat bank at deposit number 29. The truck stops at the precinct and Tina and Scott pull up behind it, while Officer Daisy comes out to see what's going on. They find the mutilated bodies in the vehicle. Damn it, Daisy, that is evidence as well as a Christmas package when Daisy shoots at a large animal fleeing the vehicle, but it gets away with their donuts no less. Tina tells the rookies to set up a perimeter while she heads to the animal shelter. She finds Wolf Cop in his fortress of solitude watching hockey, and she asks him where his car is. Where's your car? before asking him what tonight was all about. He tells her that the package in the truck had a tag on it that bore the mark of the shapeshifters. <laughs> give or take a word or two, which changes Tina's tune, and she leaves after telling him to put on some pants. We then learn, through talk radio exposition, that motivational speaker slash billionaire entrepreneur Sydney Swallows has set up shop in Woodhaven to open up the old brewery and bring some revenue into this dying town, and that part of the brewery is being turned into a hockey arena, where Woodhaven's new team, the Dark Stars, will be playing their first game in a couple of days on Christmas Eve. Cut over to the precinct, where Lou is working on getting the Santa's helper's box truck running, so that he can take the bodies to the morgue, drop the package off at HQ, and then torch the van. When the town's interim mayor shows up, Bubba Rich, peddling chicken milk stout, slam a cold cock, and expressing his concerns about the amount of dead bodies popping up recently, and that he's heard that there is a giant wolf cop wandering around, and wants to know why you've never seen wolf cop and Lou in the same place at the same time. Cut over to the animal shelter where Lou is trying to open the package, and when he does, it's just full of green goo. He calls Tina to let her know that the package was just full of lizard goo. When someone emerges from it, that someone turns out to be the real Willie Higgins, who tells Lou that he was abducted and violently probed before ultimately being replaced by a shapeshifter. They see an ad for chicken milk stout, and Willie asks Lou to go get some for him. Cut over to the Dark Star Brewery, where Sydney and his scientist, Dr. Brundle, are checking out her newest creation, Frank, which will work as a distraction so that they can work behind the scenes while Wolf Cop is preoccupied with Frank. Cut over to the liquor donut store, where Lou notices that the owner has totally monetized the Wolf Cop. Yeah, Wolf Cop is our official mascot. We share profits. Before he picks up a Wolf Cop outfit and some chicken milk. Cut over to the strip club, where Frank shows up looking for some skulls to smash. Meanwhile, Lou begins transforming into Wolf Cop. Willie struggles in the bathroom with a grumbly tummy, and Frank goes ham on the club patrons, depositing this guy into the meat bank at number 30, and this guy gets a heel to the neck at deposit number 31. At the animal shelter, Willie deals with his new 
stomach growth. You with me, not sack? And Tina gets a call from Daisy telling her that there's been an attack at the strip club. Willie shows her his little talking Willie before the three of them head to the club. But before they can get there, Scott and Daisy are there and they see two more deposits in the meat bank at deposit number 32 and 33. Daisy leaves to call for backup while Scott continues investigating. He finds Frank and Frank notices something in Scott's abdomen and decides to leave him be. But when Scott pulls a gun on Frank, Frank is forced to retaliate. But when backup arrives, Chief Tina and Wolf Cop head in to see what's happening and find Scott's headless and lifeless body in the meat bank at deposit number 34. Tina and Wolf Cop face off against Frank, but when the bullets are ineffective, Wolf Cop resorts to an attempted mauling, which is equally as ineffective. Wolf Cop gets the snot kicked out of him before Tina fashions a Molotov cocktail and lights Frank on fire. She and Wolf Cop escape the inferno, and Tina tells Willie to take Wolf Cop somewhere safe so he can heal. Willie takes Lou to his sister Kat's house, who picks up on Lou's lycanthropy right away. He's a lichen. And a werewolf, not the point. Can you please fix him? Cat grinds up a moon rock and has Lou snort it, which activates his werewolf healing powers. He tries to get up and go back to Woodhaven, but Cat says that he needs to rest up and heal. And how is it a little kitty can pin down a big bad wolf? Okay, getting weird. Cut over to Tina and Daisy, who are trying to figure out what happened at the strip club. Can't believe people really think that chicken milk is gonna transform Woodhaven. And Tina puts together that Sydney Swallows is a shapeshifter, and Darkstar is a front for them. Cut over to Willie, Lou, and Kat, where we find out that Willie and Kat used to be really close, but a couple of years ago she left Woodhaven and kind of went off the radar. And we find out that she's definitely a lady who can fend for herself. <laughs> And Willie tries to hide his abdomen growth. I'm gonna, Willie, I'm gonna, run, 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 run. They head back to her house, and Willie lights up on the couch with little Willie Nelson. And Lou and Cat burst through the door and head to the bedroom, where Cat slips out of her skin and into something more likenable. And the two go to town in such a way that if I described it, you probably wouldn't believe me. And when Willie turns on the TV to drown out the noise, ah! Ah, I still hear him. a commercial for chicken milk comes on, causing little Willie to recede. We cut over to Tina and Daisy, who have infiltrated the Dark Star Brewery slash arena, and they overhear a meeting between Mayor Rich and Sydney Swallows. Mayor Rich gives a toast to their business deal and pounds down a chicken milk, but he gets a case of the old sour tummy. <laughs> when Sydney activates the beacon, and a little Yoshi bursts from his stomach, <laughs> and in spite of his best efforts to fight back, Yoshi deposits Mayor Rich into the meat bank at deposit number 35. And when Tina has seen enough, she goes to leave, but Daisy isn't quick enough and gets napped before she can. Cut over to Cat and Lou, whose pillow talk gets interrupted when Willie bangs on the door asking for help. Who? Bad Willie telling them that Little Willie has become Bad Willie. They find the little guy when he shoots out from under the table and bites onto Lou. <laughs> and when Willie can't pull the trigger on Little Willie, Cat grabs the gun and blows the little beastie away. Cat realizes that Little Willie was a shapeshifter offspring and tells the guys that the Earth's atmosphere keeps shapeshifters from reproducing and that if they found a way to impregnate humans, the human and lichen race for that matter are totally screwed. The next evening before the big game, Tina, Willie, and Lou prepare for battle as they prepare to drop the puck at the arena. The trio arrive incognito as Sydney begins the opening ceremony and opens the brewery now and debuts the town's new hockey team. And when Organo begins the national anthem, he also turns on the beacon, giving the crowd an awful case of the bubble guts. <laughs> As the reptilians they've been incubating begin bursting from their stomachs, Willie heads to the sound booth to stop the beacon and saves this guy in the process before shooting Organo into the meat bank at deposit number 36, when he admits that he was the one who probed Willie. I'm the one who probed you. Willie smashes the beacon and orders the living crowd members to vacate the premises. Here is a little ditty to help you along. As we count eight meat bank deposits in the crowd members who aren't moving anymore, accounting for deposits 37 through 44 into the meat bank. And what the f***? You were deposit number 11 for the first movie. Fine, you survived getting shot in the head, I guess. Whatever. Dropping our count down to 43. Wolf Cop faces off against Sydney's hockey team of human-robot hybrids, I think. It's hard to tell because their movements have mechanical whirring, but they're also filled with guts. But what's easy to tell is me telling you that they end up in the meat bank at deposits 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, and 53 into the meat bank. Sydney presents his hostage and sends the rest of the team into the fight as he makes his getaway. Wolf Cop deposits numbers 54 through 57 and then heads to the player's bench to snort Lunar Rock off of a scythe that Willie borrowed from some dude. <laughs> Whoa, 
That was the coolest way to do drugs! Survivor's Guilt does not condone the use of illicit drugs, and any allusion to illicit substance usage is hereby condemned by Survivor's Guilt and its affiliated parties. Illicit substance consumption can result in sensory impairment, inability to operate a motor vehicle, and the illusion of having a good time, and even death. Remember kids, stay sober and stay safe. This message was brought to you by standing together in opposition to narcotics and drugs. Anyway, we then get deposits 58 through 70 as Wolf Cop swipes his way through more team members, before number two comes driving into the rink and begins shooting him. <laughs> Cut over to Tina, who has followed Sydney and shoots him after Daisy punches him. He reveals that he's rigged the entire stadium to blow, and they let him escape to buy themselves some more time. Merry Christmas, b****s. Meanwhile, number two continues driving towards Wolf Cop when something lands on her vehicle and throws her out. It turns out to be Cat, who's finally showed up, and the team's cheerleaders finish her off, pinching off a number two at deposit number 71 into the meat bank. Daisy and Tina survey the aftermath. The horror. The paperwork before the group flees from the building, just before it explodes. The group kick back and enjoy their beer while they watch the building burn, before leaving to head to the bar. Mid-credits, we cut over to the Sisters of Mercy Hospital, and this guy who underwent facial reconstructive surgery and is being released. How do I look? Very... handsome. Also known as the faceless guy who wouldn't stop screaming from the first movie. Can you even tell I had work May done? I help you cross? But when he tries to cross the street, he gets hit by the wolf cop wagon and splattered into the meat bank at deposit number 72, and the movie ends. Now let's take a look at our main characters and the death that surrounds them to determine your odds of surviving this movie. We start off our meat bank deposits with the 23 from the first movie, since we had to adjust our account for that one guy that certainly didn't survive, but apparently survived. Before we get to the sound guy at deposit number 24, Santa's helpers at deposits 25 through 28, the strip club patrons succumb to Frank at deposits 29 through 32, Scott rookie into the meat bank at deposit number 33, Mayor Rich under the tables at deposit number 34, Organo anthems in at deposit number 35, the deceased crowd members end up at deposits 36 through 43, the team members make up deposits 44 through 70, number 2 comes in at 71, and we wrap up our meat bank deposits with Faceless Guy calling back at deposit number 72 into our meat bank. Now let's take a look at our survivors. We've got Tina, Lou, Daisy, Willie, Cap, and Sydney, which means that out of a total of 78 characters, only 6 survive, giving you a 7 7.69% chance of surviving this series. Given those odds, what will you call the lizard that bursts from your stomach and kills you? Let me know in the comments below. And if this is your first time on my channel, go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And congratulations to vids for you on winning this month's ghost fake mask. And a huge thanks to all of you who showed up at the watch along on the 29th and the live Q&A that followed. That was a ton of fun. And I promise that they will get more organized as I go. I haven't quite got the hang of doing live streams and I'm incompetent and long-winded, but don't worry, we'll get through this. And thanks for bearing with me on this journey. Alrighty guys, as always, thanks and don't die.